The death of the Queen rocked Britain, with many taking part in events and queues to demonstrate their grief. In fact, just last week, new Prime Minister Liz Truss was almost totally taken out of the world of politics and forced to play a supporting role to His Majesty the King in leading the public through a very tough national period. However, with the official mourning period over, politics will hopefully go back to normal, which means that Truss will need to start dealing with four different crises facing the country right now. So let's take a look at what problems Truss is facing and what she might actually do to fix them. So right off the bat, it looks like Truss is facing four main problems. The energy crisis, the inflation crisis, strikes, and an NHS crisis. So let's take them each in turn and have a look at what she might do this week to try and alleviate them. The energy crisis is without a doubt one of the most spoken about problems facing the country right now. The post-COVID surge in demand, combined with the war in Ukraine, increased energy costs massively. Countries are now desperately trying to cut Russia out of their energy supply chain, reducing supply while demand stays the same. Here in the UK, a mechanism known as the energy price cap tries to limit the amount that individual households will have to pay for energy, but this itself is partly linked to the wholesale price of gas. As such, it's been predicted that this could rise to an excess of £5,000 next year without government intervention. Now, as Prime Minister, Boris Johnson refused to come up with a policy to alleviate the crisis, instead deciding that it should be left to a successor to deal with. Now, so far, Truss has promised to limit the energy price cap at £2,500, the price it's set to rise to in October. But to be clear, this doesn't actually mean that each household will pay no more than £2,500. It just means that that's what the average household will pay. And regardless, this is still a rise from last year's winter cap of £1,277. As such, some have criticised this plan, saying that it doesn't go far enough and isn't being targeted to the families who need it most. Additionally, Truss is planning to pay for some of this via borrowing, which some have claimed would cost about £100 billion, making the policy, according to some, the biggest fiscal intervention since the Second World War. For context, the cost of the NHS test and trace system was around £35 billion, and even this was ridiculed for its monumental cost. As such, there is a concern that this could have some serious, more long-term knock-on effects, such as making it harder for the UK government to borrow money in the future, or at least making borrowing money more expensive. The point we're trying to make here is that Truss has already taken the first step to alleviate the hurt caused by this crisis. But this isn't without controversy, and she'll still need to go further with this if she wants to fully cover the cost. Not least because businesses are not subject to the energy price cap and are currently facing an incredibly expensive winter, with many businesses reporting a tenfold increase in prices. Now, this week, it's expected that the Prime Minister will announce an emergency budget, and businesses will undoubtedly be hoping that this will contain some sort of support package for them, as well as potentially another plan for lower-income households in order to offer more targeted support. Regardless, this is only the first of the major crises facing Truss. Another issue contributing to the overarching meta-crisis that is the cost of living is the ridiculously high inflation rate. Roughly, inflation is about 9.9% in the UK, putting it at the highest rate in 40 years. The fact that people are spending more on energy and the fact that everyday items cost about 10% more than they did a year ago means that household budgets are being pushed to breaking point. So far, Truss hasn't made clear what her plan is to tackle inflation, although some have suggested that the energy price cap could take 4 or 5 percentage points off inflation. But the Prime Minister probably isn't relying on this alone in order to tackle inflation. We'll likely find out what her true plans are in the rumoured emergency budget later in the week. But for the moment, inflation remains a real concern for households. Moving on to the third crisis, strikes. As the aforementioned inflation crisis demonstrates, everyday items are getting more expensive. 
and workers are beginning to realize that their pay rises are not exceeding inflation, and as such, they're being given real-term pay cuts. As a result, rail workers, barristers, dock hands, bus drivers, refuse collectors, Amazon employees, and journalists are all striking in an attempt to increase their pay. And this has a big impact on the wider economy and the day-to-day -day functioning of the country as a whole. Truss has, on a number of occasions, indicated that she's a great admirer of former Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher, and there are indeed a number of parallels between her and the Iron Lady, most notably on the economy. And Thatcher is perhaps most famous for her view of unions in the 1980s, and her crackdown on them. As with Thatcher, Truss has promised that she'll start cracking down on strikes, now, this could result in fewer strikes, or it could stoke the fire even further, but only time will tell. Moving on to the last crisis that Trust will have to deal with, the NHS crisis. In a nutshell, the NHS is struggling due to the huge backlog created by the coronavirus pandemic, with the backlog now roughly 7 million people long, and the current median waiting time for treatment sitting at about 13.3 weeks. Additionally, NHS data is currently showing that around 700,000 people have had to wait for more than 12 hours in A&E, which is a 144% increase from 2019. And this is a real problem, because the British medical journal has found that waiting more than five hours in emergency care before admission into hospital increases the chance of dying from any cause in the next 30 days after visiting A&E. The point of all of this is to show that the NHS isn't in a good place right now and is really struggling to clear the backlog. As such, something serious needs to be done in order to improve the NHS. The Health Secretary, Therese Coffey, has already stated that her priority will be to reduce the backlog, and it's likely that we'll see some kind of statement about this in the coming days and weeks. All in all, it seems that Liz Truss has a number of problems that require her urgent attention, it's an unenviable position for her to be in, and it's certainly one of the most tricky starting points for any British Prime Minister in post-war history. And you can follow along with how she does by subscribing to The Daily Briefing, our show where we break down the four biggest news stories each day, giving you an outline of the things you need to know, ensuring that you're always up to date. And unlike similar shows, ours is in the normal TLDR style, which means that it's quick, easy to understand, unbiased, independent, and sometimes hosted by me. You can watch on YouTube or Nebula by subscribing to the TLDR Daily channel. It's linked down below. Or you can listen by searching in your favorite podcast app.